Well, first off, thank you for inviting us, uh, Visit HB, to be here, part of this wonderful monthly gathering of, of leaders around the community. And so I want to talk a little bit about what we are and what we aren't and why tourism matters. Uh, we are Visit Huntington Beach. We are a private company. We're a nonprofit, but we're a 501c6. And what we do is we try and take this thing called a destination brand. And we try and do what our partners can't do individually, but collectively, we kind of spin this great brand promise and we get it out there all over the world globally. And that's what we do. And we're very proud of that. I'm going to tell you some of the things that we do and what the successes that we have. So our vision, real simple. We want to be an effective city destination leader representing the combined tur industry and community partnership. If you saw Gary's, uh, 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 the piece there about partnerships, that's what we do. In the brand development, marketing, and sales of what are we? We're Surf City USA. And our mission, I think this is dead on. This was done years ago, and I think it's so true today. We definitely want to be the preferred quintessential California beach destination, leading to two things, like Scott just mentioned, increased visitor spending and enhanced quality of life for all the residents. Tourism is big. Globally, it's about 10% of GDP. About 1 in 11 jobs around the world are tied to tourism. It's $1.5 trillion in exports. It's one of the three largest exports in America because international visitation is considered by the Department of Commerce as an export. About 15 million jobs in the U.S. We're a little bit more dependent on tourism here in, in, the, in the States than the rest of the world. About one in nine jobs are dependent on the travel industry. Within the U.S., if it wasn't for travel, if we were to go away tomorrow, each household would pay an additional 1100 And this is about two years old, this fact, so it's probably up a little bit more. In California, it's absolutely huge. We're the most visited state in America right now. A million jobs tied to the tourism industry, $9.3 billion in state and local taxes, and this number just came out, $117.5 billion are spent by travelers in our state. It's an incredible number. The state of California now has a budget of $100 million, of which only about $200,000 comes from the general fund. It's all a private partnership that dollars have been stepped up and given to that initiative. Orange County, 47 million visitors just this last year. For the first time, we have more visitors in Orange County than LA. Wow. Yeah. And big shout out to Steve Bone and some of those people years ago, and Paulette, you might have been part of that initiative, the Orange County Visitors Association, now nearly 20 years old, has been driving this message about the real OC, and it's starting to work. About $11 billion a year. You saw that other number, $117 billion, so we get $11 billion just sent, spent here in Orange County. And Huntington Beach, we are one of the leading destinations of what we call occupancy, rev par, and average daily weight. We're running about $240 in change for occupancy. I mean, excuse me, rate. Occupancy is running almost 82%, and rev par, which is revenue per available room, is about $204, $205. That's more than any other destination in the OC. <coughs> they spend a million dollars a day. You break that down, it's $40,000 an hour, 24-7, 365, are spent by visitors. We're going to be updating this number in a research study later on. That's a, that's a boatload of cash, right? $10 million generated in local taxes. $9 million in what we call our TOT, our occupancy. Those are dollars that you do not pay. Somebody comes to our wonderful destination, they check in at the lovely waterfront. That's a 10% tax. We get a tenth of that. The city retains 90% of that, so interesting enough. That number has been up 8.5% since 2011-12, 34% during that period, generating about $32 million back into the city general fund since this period here. And there's a quick little thing here. You cover your eye, you can read these numbers here. This is just showing you how successful we've collectively been as, as a destination. There's the recession, and you can see the growth in TOT. If I were to put down what it would look like nationally, that, number, that line would be here. So we are exceeding the rest of the country. So what do we do? We're called DMOs. We used to be called CBBs, but we're destination marketing organizations. And this is a great, great slide, one of the best I've ever seen in, in, in my years in the industry. In a recent study by Oxford Economics, they talked about destination promotion, and they finally got some hard numbers about when a, current, when a community has a very successful destination promotion activity, four things happen. The quality of life amongst the residents increases. 
This is big. Raising the destination profile, they point out a couple of uh, facts here. Boeing decided to move from Seattle, Washington, their headquarters, to Chicago because of the efforts that the, the uh, Chicago Bureau was doing and the quality of life they saw and all the cultural attributes in that destination. Huge story. BMW, another case, Spartanburg, Greenville, if you've ever been to South Carolina, that was a huge reason why they decided to open up that plant there. Attracting strategic events, the air show. I would contend to say that if we were not successful, we would not be looking at a major air show coming here because of the perception of, of the positive perception of Surf City USA. Building transportation networks. You've seen the success that John Wayne Airport's had recently. Adding two more flights just announced the other day. You saw the numbers in the paper this week, up 10%. So that's, if it wasn't for visitors coming here, those things would probably not happen. <coughs> Quick thing here, this is where our world every day, you don't have to memorize this, but there's you know, people when they want to visit here, they do all this research. They plan their trip, they book it. They come here and they experience it when they're here. They go to their phone, they, they go to a website, a website that's uh, optimized hopefully, and can get all the information to them, and then they go back and share it. So these are all the areas that we play in, in day in and day out, and it is a competitive landscape out there. So you can see some of the trends underneath here, the things that we deal with, economic uncertainty, politics, all those sort of things. But 12 things, and I just wanted to mention this real quick, we do day in and day out. So if you could picture this instead of 66 people on the big board, picture a dozen. So what we do is we do HR and admin, we do advocacy, we're in DC, we're in Sacramento, I'm going to an event at Travis Allen's uh, ask uh, this afternoon. Website and social media, destination product development. We do research. We'll be spending about 100 grand a year this year on research, finding out attitude, perceptions of what people think about us. Sales, visitor services, strategic and annual plans, brand, brand promise and positioning, straight marketing and public relations, film and sports, and international travel trade. And those are just 12 things that we do. We have to keep those balls in the air all the time to be competitive. Some of the wins. Remember this? We found out about these contests going on, so we pushed all that content out. Many of you voted. We were very proud of those two big uh, uh, designations last year. Just this last week, we received two awards. They're right outside here. One's called the Poppy Award. The other's called the Adrian Award for the Best of Show. This was all centered around this wonderful event here. Ten and a half million dollars in media. Thank you. Yeah. Those awards are right outside here. Go take a look. That Adrian Award is the Academy Award globally in marketing for public relations. And this was quite an event. Uh, PR, uh, that drove a lot of our PR stuff. We're in the field every day pitching stories. Susan and her team, they're going to New York, going to go to some desks with some very powerful uh, media folks and talking about the wonderful things about Surf City USA. I'm going to show you four little snippets. We did 12 of these. They're 15 seconds long. These are what's running on social media right now. They're getting 50,000 views, each of these, at an average cost of less than one penny on click through. So why don't we roll these? Discussions are all for them. You get the most employment from the impact on the beach. There's just opportunity for anyone at any level to go beach level. And it's always going year round. And I think that's a little bit different than anywhere else I've seen. It's a special thing. My favorite place to handboard is on the boardwalk in Huntington Beach. When I'm out for a cruise, my sense of it is that I'm having more fun than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Watching my kids play, smile, and laugh, and be carefree is my favorite thing in the world. It's these natural moments. Typical night in Huntington can be whatever you want it to be. One of my favorite places to get dolled up with the girlfriends is Sea Lake. They have amazing wine. It's just a great choice to go with the girls and have a night out. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Had to get this in, right? So, 
quick little story. All those tw those twelve vignettes we showed you four of them. We sh we got all that B-roll so we can repurpose all that, and it's really great. So it's a big year, without question. It's a big year for us. Uh, this is probably uh, a seminal year. I think that's the word when we talk about this. Is uh, I think we're going to look back on 2016. Not only are we talking about expansion, new properties, new attractions opening up, but we have the new research I talked about. We're doing a major brand refresh. So on June 28th, you'll be able to see logo, a refresh of what we're talking about, new positioning. We're starting to put in the ground by the end of the year a new wayfinding system. And we talked about the wonderful park just up the road here, Billy, the great, we said 200 grand, 300 grand going in that. So how do you tell people how to get there from here? Well, with signage that we're going to be putting in that's on brand, it's going to be a lot easier. Responsive website, new ad campaign, new visitor guide, the ambassador program we've retooled, that's going to launch here uh, later this month. We're going to do our second year of a shuttle, a free shuttle, uh, middle of June through the Labor Day, right after Labor Day, and our extranet, a way for you to find out what we're doing and get information like this. <coughs> Got one more little video for you here. This is a little trailer. Our, we, the film, we launched the film for the big board. It's been accepted. We're a finalist in the Newport Film Festival. And this is a little trailer we did, and once we Win that award, hopefully, we'll be shooting the whole 15-minute video out, the movie, for everybody around the world to see once again. That was a great day in our history. Uh, we will be developing a walking tour, a kind of a cultural history surf tour app that you'll be able to go down to the International Surf Museum, know that where to get the selfie. As you walk down towards the pier, there's the walking hall of fame, the, the, uh, both hall of fames right next to one another, the pier, the Duke Kamana Homoko, right, got that right, statue, and on and on. So, and you'll be able to get your 10,000 steps, 5,000, 2,500, depending on how many you want to get in. But that's going to do a lot to get people through our community without question. Uh, in wrapping up, I wanted to show you a quote that kind of sums it all up and I think brings it together. A good friend of mine, Mara Gass, who does what I do in Irvine, Texas, she said this at the podium about 10 years ago. And I think when people ask us, why does tourism matter? Why do we, when we get up every day, it's not just about doing a visitor guide or a map, but this is truly the essence of what DMOs do. And before I show you this, I want all the staff to stand up real quick with, CV, with the Visit Huntington Beach. And give these people a big round of applause. And we have some board members. I know I'm short on time, but if you could stand up too. I know Paulette, I saw you here, and Laura, Meg. Can I get everybody? And Jerry. That's the people that we are accountable to, and they, we're glad for their service as well. So what Maura said was this. She said, if you build a place where people want to visit, you build a place where people want to live. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you build a place where people want to live, you build a place where people need to work. Do you agree with that? If you build a place where people want to work, you build a place where business wants to be. And if you do those three things successfully, if you build a place where business is, you build a place where people want to visit. And I can tell you that this is so true. I've been in this business 25 years. I've worked for some great destinations. And I think all of us at the Bureau and the Board are, are collectively as excited as we've ever been. Because this is one of the hottest brands going right now. And we know we have to kind of preserve the experience. It's just not all about getting people. It's the right people with the right amount of money at the right time to tell the right people about why Surf City USA matters. I'm proud of the team, and thanks for allowing me to come here and talk a little bit about tourism. I appreciate that. Yeah.